Well, I'd have to start with my childhood. I was from a divorced home. Mom and dad got divorced when I was two, two and a half. So um, summers were spent with my dad, the rest of the year with my mom. Uh, every year when we'd go to visit my dad, there was always a pull towards the things of God, whereas with my mom, there was no Christian influence at all. So uh, when I was 14, um, went to Tucson where dad was living and um, decided that I wanted to live for Christ. And at that point in time, uh, we just we stayed in Tucson and I lived there with my dad from that point forward. Uh, I, naturally, since dad believed the message and that's the version of Christ that I got. So I started when I was 14 and um, was in it till I was 55. I started questioning the message probably seven or eight years ago when I started seeing fruits in ministers' lives that I didn't think should be there. I started thinking there's something wrong. Um, there's an old adage about, you know, apples don't fall far from a tree. And so when I started seeing so many bad apples falling from a tree, uh, I started thinking that maybe I needed to start inspecting the tree rather than just the apples. Uh, that was the beginning of my uh, questioning. But having been raised in the message, you weren't allowed to question William Branham. You weren't allowed to put any kind of uh, mark on his life. Um, so I wouldn't go very deep in my question. I just refused to. And so, but that was what started the questioning. The thing that made me say there's something seriously wrong with this was when I started realizing that the very things that William Branham used as his vindications were all false. I think the trigger point for me was probably the cloud uh, because William Branham used that as vindication for one of his major revelations, which was the seals. Uh, when I realized that he wasn't present when the cloud was over Arizona, he was in Houston, Texas. Uh, that was a big flag for me. I thought, okay, now we have a man that's, for lack of a better word, lying about his vindications. That generated serious concerns for me. My walk with Christ has been nothing but enhanced since leaving the message. Um, I loved the Lord with all my heart for 40 years within the message. I mean, there's, I never wavered, never questioned. Uh, I sincerely loved God, but I had there was a constant fear in my life. Um, am I right? Uh, is the token applied? All these various things that, that produced fear in my life, and that fear is completely gone. I realize now that my sufficiency is in Christ and Christ alone, and that any good works or bad works or whatever goes on in my life has nothing to do with my eternal security in Christ because I'm already accepted in the Beloved. So. Because of that grace, it only behooves me to want to live a life that pleases the Lord. So my whole motivation now is out of love for God. The scripture says that the love of God constrains me to do the will of God. And so that's what motivates me. So that's how my life has been enriched by realizing the gospel of grace that is so prevalent uh, now in what I'm believing and what I'm living now and contrary to what I believed and lived through the message. If I was going to try to encourage somebody, I would, I would say, don't be afraid of the truth. The um, Bible tells us that the truth will set us free. Uh, the message life is not a life of freedom in Christ. It's a life of rules and regulations, all structured for the purpose of gaining favor with God. And that's not the gospel of, that Christ preached. That's not the gospel that Paul preached. Uh, the book of Galatians just lays out grace so plainly. And that's the gospel that we're called to. So I would say don't be afraid to seek out truth because it's the life in Christ is so much richer.